everyone welcome to dit dot my name is manta and today we are going to be making homemade turkey gravy so in my last video i did an entire thanksgiving meal for four in one hour it was a fun challenge that i did so if you haven't checked out that video make sure you do um but I think I had like six dishes and my bonus round was to make gravy. I did not actually have time to make the gravy. So I'm decided I'm going to put it in this separate video. Now I do have on my channel already a white gravy. So if you are looking for a white gravy and I also have a mushroom gravy on the channel and I will link those, but today turkey gravy. And so the four big key components of a homemade gravy are a fat, flavor, flour, and a liquid. So let me show you how those four things break down into making a delicious gravy. Okay, so gravy actually will come together really quickly. So a lot of times it is a dish that is made at the end of the meal. I'm going to go ahead and get a skillet. I prefer doing gravy in a skillet. Some people prefer doing it in like a saucepan and the first thing that we need, I said, is fat. So I'm actually going to mix a little bit of butter and some baking grease. Now, if I had a turkey from Thanksgiving dinner that had been cooking in the oven all day, I would use the fat, the pan drippings from that turkey because that's gonna give you a really good tasting fat and it's gonna have a lot of turkey flavor. But the other day when I cooked this meal, I did turkey breasts and I could have used some of the pan drippings from that, but again, I'm making this gravy separate. So sometimes you don't have a roast that you are using to make a gravy. So then you need to be able to create a gravy without those delicious pan drippings. But again, that is going to be your ideal part. Now I am not giving you measurements because the way that I learned to make gravy was just by feel and that's what I wanna show you today too. So I'm gonna use mostly butter. I'm just gonna use a little bit of bacon fat just because I have it. And again, anywhere that we can get that flavor component in is going to be helpful here because we don't have the pan drippings and we all know that bacon fat is full of flavor i do just keep my bacon fat and my butter at room temperature they will last depending on your climate i live in the pacific northwest and it's not too hot or humid that my butter is going to go bad before i use it all up okay so this is the part that's just the wee bit tricky and if you do want to start off with measuring that's good you're going to use about equal parts flour to fat. But again, because I always just eyeball everything, I kind of start with a little bit lower flour and I'm gonna add just a little bit more. My pan is on medium right now and you wanna whisk it in together and you want it to kind of look like this. Let me bring you in and show you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lower because I'm trying to do this a little bit slower for the video. And then I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to add some pepper, actually quite a bit of pepper. Again, we want the flavor. And then because this is turkey, I'm going to go in with a little bit of sage. That would be in the pan drippings probably. That flavor of sage would be in that if you were using it. And I've got some garlic, but you know what? I'm actually gonna opt out of the garlic and use garlic powder because I don't really want the little pieces of garlic in this gravy. We could also, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and put in some onion powder. So these are our flavor components. And you wouldn't necessarily need to add these herbs if you are using pan drippings. or you might use less. Okay, so you see how the gravy is just like kind of a gross mess right now, but that's okay, that's what we want. And I'm just giving the flour a chance to cook, and then we're gonna add our liquid. That's the last part. 
So I am using this turkey stock. If you can't find turkey stock, you can use chicken stock. Okay, I'm gonna start off with just a little bit. And really the main difference between this and a milk or cream gravy is the liquid. If I wanted to make this a white gravy, I would be using milk or cream. And I just add in a little bit at a time and see it might get clumpy up like that, that's okay. And just keep stirring it in. This is why some people prefer a saucepan. And just keep working the clumps. And eventually it will come together into a nice, smooth gravy. Now if you put in too much fat and you didn't get enough flour, you will have greasy gravy and that's not good. You have to have enough flour to absorb the fat that you use. Oh, smells good. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Also, it's kind of good to make your gravy a little bit on the looser side because as it sits, it'll continue sticking up a little bit. And if you used pan drippings, you might wanna go ahead and run your gravy through a, uh, what do you call it? A strainer, <laughs> I can't think of the word. You might wanna run your gravy, your gravy through a strainer to get out any kind of like bits that might have been in the drippings. Oh my gosh, but look how silky and smooth this is. Okay, and it's important to taste it because you might need more salt or pepper. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. And then the last thing that I do, actually I'm gonna turn, turn it back on because you want heat for this. Why won't we turn? The last thing that I'm gonna do is put another thin pat of butter at the end and that's called glossing your gravy and it just adds a, one last little bit of sheen to your gravy. Just adding just that last pat at the end. I don't know why, there is a scientific reason behind it, but the butter that you add here at the end is different than the butter you add at the beginning. I don't remember why, but it, it'll, what it's called, gloss the gravy and just give it a nice, beautiful shine. Now, again, using pan drippings is gonna give you that more turkey flavor that you're wanting, but just having this uh, turkey stock, I taste the turkey kind of flavor coming through. So here is my gravy on top of some mashed potatoes. I gotta tell you a funny story about uh, the reason why I don't have a gravy boat. A couple of years ago, we lived in a different house that had a much smaller kitchen. And when Marie Kondo was big, I went through and got rid of everything in my kitchen that did not bring me joy because every time I needed something out of a cabinet, I had to pull down like 10 other things to get to the thing that I needed. And when it came to the gravy boat, I'm like, I only use it once a year at Thanksgiving. I don't really need this. It takes up way too much space in my cabinets. So I got rid of my gravy boat. I haven't replaced it. I don't miss it. Again, I only use it at Thanksgiving. This, uh, I actually, this I actually picked up at Goodwill because it was cobalt blue and it does bring me joy. And even though it is not a gravy boat, it can double as one and I love it. It's actually like a little cream pitcher. But anyway, <laughs> I love anything with cobalt blue. You'll see cobalt blue in my kitchen as little touches. Let's taste this gravy before it gets cold. Mmm. Mm. 
Yes, on the mashed potatoes, this is good. Mm, good, 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 good. Mm, and let me know these are leftover mashed potatoes <laughs> because it's from my video from a couple days ago. And you know, leftover mashed potatoes can get dried out. So having some gravy to go with them. Mm, so good. Okay, I'm gonna save that and eat it with the rest of my lunch. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Make sure you hit subscribe. I do a lot of cooking tutorials. I do product review videos. And I just like to have fun in the kitchen and around the home. So I will talk to you later. And bye, guys.